Today we're removing the stereo from a Mitsubishi Endeavor. Start with grasping the back edges left and right of the front dash panel below the dash and pulling forward releasing clips. Place your hand in the opening on the top of this panel and pull it from the dash releasing the remaining clips. You can access the connector at the emergency flashers and disconnect. Pull the panel slightly forward and access the two connectors at the AC controls. Remove this panel and set it aside. We will need it for aftermarket installation. This will expose two screws above the car stereo on each side of the display. Remove these screws and lift this panel up and remove it. This will expose four more mounting screws for the display module, two at the front and two in the back at the top. Remove these screws and lift this display panel up. This will access one 10 millimeter bolt securing the back of the car stereo to the frame of the vehicle. Remove four mounting screws at the face of the car stereo, two on the right and two on the left, and pull the car stereo from the dash. Now you've pulled the stereo out of the dash and have access to the back of the stereo. And in order to release these uh, connectors, uh, the main antenna, usually this is a universal antenna, and to remove most antennas, you grasp it by the base and it just removes. To reinstall it, it just goes back in and push it in until it's tight. Now, connectors are a little bit different story here. We have down the back here, we have the main connector into the back of the radio. And in order to remove this connector, I'm going to use my thumbnail and push down on this little trigger at the top of the connector. This will allow the lock on the connector to release and usually you can wiggle this connector loose once pushing that trigger down. This can be difficult at times. There we go. There we go. Now this main connector again, there is a trigger here on the top. You can see the little hooks right here. And uh, these hooks go in and, and lock the connector into place and to release that you push this trigger down it lowers the hooks. This goes for most connectors. Uh, this is a Chrysler connector, and we have the, still the little hooks that are sitting right in here, and the lock at the back. And you push this down, this uh, clip down, and it will release the connector when wiggling loose. We also have the uh, Honda connector here. Uh, this one has a trigger at the center of it here, and you push this down as well, and can release this connector. Now, all these connectors are keyed, even though they're for different vehicles. Most connectors in the car are keyed differently, so they only go back to one spot, and there's no mistake of putting them in the wrong spot. For aftermarket installation, you need a singled-in stereo with connector, the aftermarket wire harness, and kit. Splice the two wire harnesses together. They mate color for color. Depending on your kit, there are two styles of mounting. Placing the tabs on the side of the car stereo using the provided hardware with your car stereo. Don't over tighten these screws. And sliding the car stereo into the front of the face and clicking it into place. The second style is using the sleeve provided with the aftermarket car stereo and sliding it into the same front kit. With a small screwdriver, pry the tabs along the edge of this sleeve out to secure it to the trim ring. Slide the car stereo into the sleeve and lock it into place. Now we're going to take the front panel that we removed earlier and at the back of it remove the four screws securing the pocket below the AC controls. We're going to use the same screws and bolt the car stereo and kit into this pocket. We're going to take our wire harness and mate it to the factory harness that came out of the original stereo and route it down below the dash along with the antenna. Put the upper dash back together and place the panel in place after connecting the stereo antenna. Please subscribe and thank you for watching.